So on the topic of thymus regeneration, in September 2019, you published a paper on a study in which a cocktail of three drugs, DHEA, metformin, and then GH, seemed to reverse the biological age of humans by between 2 and 2.5 years. Could you give us a bit more details of this study, the effect on the thymus, and how did you measure the age? So that's a lot of questions, but we'll go through some of them. <laughs> right. So the, the drug cocktail is a combination of growth hormone, DHEA, and metformin. And the growth hormone is what regenerates the thymus. So we've known since 1986 that if you continuously expose an old rat to growth hormone, the incredibly deteriorated thymus, which looks nothing like a normal thymus, both histologically and physically, uh, the thymus actually shrinks down to a size that was so small that they couldn't even weigh it in, in the study. It looks like a glob of fat, but you can still bring that thymus back by giving the animal's cells that uh, secrete growth hormone constitutively. And they found that when they did that, not only did the thymus come back uh, to its normal morphology, but T-cell ability to respond to foreign antigens was restored back to the level seen for a three-month-old rat. So that caught my attention. Everybody else ignored it. And so the TRIM trial was designed to see if we could do something like that in humans. I showed in my own self-study that using growth hormone and DHEA allowed me to develop statistical proof of the regeneration of the functional part of my own thymus, at least based on MRI investigations. So why DHEA plus growth hormone? So growth hormone regrows the thymus. Why do you need the DHEA? You need the DHEA because growth hormone has a side effect. And people have linked IGF-1 and growth hormone to pro-aging processes, but there hasn't been that much attention to mechanisms by which that might happen, in particular to the role of insulin. So one of the drawbacks to growth hormone is that it raises insulin levels. And insulin is a very pro-aging factor. And it may be that the drawbacks of growth hormone administration are largely driven by this side effect of hyperinsulinemia. And I uh, asked myself a question before I did my own self-experiment. Why is it that if you give growth hormone to an older person, their insulin levels go up, but a young person is replete in growth hormone and has low levels of insulin? What's the difference? And I just speculated that the difference could be that young people have large amounts of DHEA in their bloodstreams as well. And that maybe a hidden unknown effect of DHEA is to actually block the hyperinsulinemic effect of growth hormone. So I gave myself growth hormone for a, a week. My insulin levels went up by about 50%. I maintained the same level of growth hormone for another week, but I added DHEA and my insulin levels went right back down to baseline. I did this several times over the course of about 10 years. I always got the same response. And even though it was just me, you do it enough times, you can achieve statistical significance, which proved that it worked at least in me. So one of the things we wanted to find out in the TRIM trial is if it worked in other people. The answer to that, although we didn't really dwell on it in the paper, because these papers are very limited in terms of the space that you have available, but but we did find that DHEA has similar effects in men in general. And then the last component was metformin, because in some cases the DHEA is not sufficient, and so you need extra help in bringing down your insulin level. So we really like metformin because it has a lot of positive effects in addition to its ability to lower insulin levels.